Amoeboid parasites, also known as Sarcadena, um, include Entamoeba histolytica. Um, it's an amoeboid-like organism that gets into the intestines and it releases enzymes that lyse tissue and they cause stringy, severe dysentery, bloody mucus is going to be released from all the damage that they're given, uh, giving to the intestinal tract. If they get into other organs, they can cause uh, swelling in cysts to form uh, in the liver, and it's just if, if it goes long term. So you do see it in third world countries um, or where water treatment is not very uh, common. Ciliophrens, I mentioned this in a previous uh, presentation, and it's Valentinian coli. It causes mild, um, very seldom it causes severe, but mild diarrhea is typical. Uh, there are a few cases of severe if the patient's really young or immunocompromised. And like I said it, earlier, it's usually associated with like pig feces or someone who's working on a farm. Uh, flagellates, uh, Trichomonas vaginalis causes an infection, vaginal, or, you know, men can get it as well. Men that are uncircumcised tend to be more likely carriers. Women have a discharge that's yellow to green, and it has an awful smell to it. It can cause scar tissue to form in the urethra, which results in sterility and increased tubal pregnancies in women. If you ever treat someone or, or have to talk to a patient about trichomonas vaginalis, it's important that their partners get treated as well. Um, if the man's not treated, he can just turn around and give the disease back to the woman again over and over again. Uh, so it's important that both uh, partners get treated or all partners get treated. Um, you hear a lot of people when they go in for uh, pap smears uh, showing up positive for trichomonas or they do the pap smear due to the uh, odor and the uh, discharge that's coming with it. Uh, and that's when they find it. A lot of your cytotechnologists and your pathologists find or recognize this. Giardia lamblia, one of the most common intestinal pathogens in the United States. It results in explosive diarrhea. There's so much gas behind it, you can hear it down the hallway. Uh, purple burps is where uh, the digestive how do, how do I say this? When you burp, what comes out smells like it should be coming out of the other end. Uh, so a lot of gas, a lot of stomach pain, uh, irritation like that. So Giardia is one of the most common. It's primarily from untreated water. Uh, there was one case a few years ago of uh, an elderly woman washed a bowl out in a stream and then put potato salad in it at a family reunion and it gave half the family giardiasis when they ate that. So I'm not sure she was ever invited back to any further family reunions after that. There was one case a number of years ago where an amusement park had a junior plumber plumbed a sewage line into a water cooler and people were taking sips of it and going, ooh, that's nasty, but they were getting the disease. So the CDC started seeing cases of giardiasis showing up all over the country and they were able to narrow it down to that specific park and that specific um, water fountain. Uh, Trypanosoma gambiensia, um, African sleeping sickness. It's a uh, trypanosome that's transmitted by the tsetse fly. Uh, these are tiny little flies that are just horrible. Uh, they will swarm you by the millions. They're hard to get rid of. Um, the tsetse fly will bite you and transmit it and it causes back dead boil. Um, a lot of the soldiers coming back from the Middle East are coming back with trypanosoma infections and they will cause boil-like structures on the face where the parasite's growing inside the boil area. Trypanosoma cruzi is a South American version of the trypanosome and it's um, transmitted uh, by Chagas disease Hmm. You know what? I just did Leishmania is Baghdad boil. See, I made a mistake, but I'm just going to say I made the mistake and not try to change the, the presentation. Trypanosomas cause African sleeping sickness. I was thinking ahead to Leishmania, which is on another slide. 
But African sleeping sickness, it causes swelling in the meninges in the brain, uh, and it is transmitted by the tsetse fly and um, the sand fly or the tsetse fly in Baghdad boil transmits the same, uh, transmits the lash mania. Um, African sleeping sickness was really bad uh, during the slave trade, and if you want to read a, a description of it, you can go to some of the the captain's logs of the ships that were transporting the slaves and read the descriptions that they gave of the past, well, the slaves that were being transported and some of the symptoms they went through. It's a horrible disease. Wasting away, comatose, horrible. Where Trypanosoma cruzi is a South American disease called Chagas disease. It's represented by swelling usually on one side of the face. That's called Ramona sign. And it's swelling on one side of the face because a kissing bug or a reduvid bug bites near the face. It's attracted to CO2. They come out at night. And when they take a blood meal, they poop out the old stuff to make room for the new stuff. So if you scratch or rub that during the night, you're rubbing the feces from the kissing bug into the wound that they've been feeding off of, and that transmits the disease. Chagas disease causes swelling of the heart. It likes to settle in uh, hard skeletal or, or cardiac tissue, so it can get into the heart and causes enlargement of the uh, left ventricle, which causes the heart not to be able to pump as efficiently. Uh, so there's just a few of the amoeboid or sarcodena type diseases.